So when I reviewed the Mercedes-Benz Centaro a few weeks back, I said that there were three iconic pieces of public transport in Sydney. Having spent plenty of time in Sydney during my childhood, if you were to ask me about the most iconic pieces of public transport in Sydney, I would give you three answers. Number one, the freshwater class ferries. Number two, the Tangara double-decker train. And number three, the Mercedes-Benz 0405 NH CNG fitted with the custom coach's Sitaro body. Since we've already reviewed one of them, I thought it was time to move on to the next, the Tangara trains. Remember how I took ages to tell you about my favourite Queensland rail train? Well for New South Wales it's easy, you're looking at it right now. Oh wait, hang on, a Waratah got in the way. Let's try this again. To be fair, the Tangara might not be the best train on the network, but it is my favourite. Entering service in 1988, the Tangara was promoted as the train of the 21st century, and compared to the K sets and C sets that preceded it, it looked like a spaceship. It was sleek, had modern conveniences like air conditioning, and the curved upper windows looked super modern. Quite frankly, it's still actually kind of hard to believe that these trains are now, in many cases, over 30 years old. The rollout of the Tangara wasn't without its problems, and due to delays, we got the C sets in the interim as a test bed for the chopper control power delivery and to help improve network capacity. Despite their much older appearance, the now retired C sets only predated the Tangara by one to two years, continuing the design language of the silver sets a little longer than first anticipated. I always found the idea of a double deck train quite novel, and to a point, I still do. I used to visit family in Sydney a lot as a young child, and I always remember pestering my parents to catch the Tangara trains. At the time, Summer Hill Station was mostly served by silver sets, and the newest trains on the network were the Millennium, which at the time had earned unflattering nicknames like My Lemon and Millenny Bug, as they had plenty of teething problems when first introduced. But thanks to my childhood pestering, I always still try to catch a Tangara when I decide to go to Sydney. Fun fact, the name Tangara is of Aboriginal origin, meaning to go. Over the years, these trains have had various refreshes, with blue cloth being replaced with blue vinyl, and then later changed to the same pattern as the newer Sydney trains. I remember the blue vinyl seating days very well, and back then the curved windows at the top were much less cloudy. They also got new doors from 2014 onward, because people with small brains thought it was quite fun to kick out the bottom panel, which caused a number of delays and dramas. There's also another technology upgrade for the Tangaras in the works, and it's meant to add CCTV, destination displays, accessible seating, better aircon, new help points and automatic train protection. Basically this would align them more with the Waratah trains in terms of features, but the 2020 completion deadline is a little out the window, as the first upgraded train is still yet to enter service. Of course, a Tangara review would not be complete without mentioning their southern cousin, the short-lived 4D train. Built in 1991, the 4D was built for Melbourne's rail network as a demonstration unit to determine whether the Public Transport Corporation should place orders for further double-deck trains. Alas, the train was not successful in its trial and despite similar interior and external appearances, the running gear had much more in common with Melbourne's combing sets. The design also had to be modified to handle broad gauge track and the train's larger size limited it to only two lines in suburban Melbourne. After brief periods of operation and long periods of storage, the train was finally retired in 2002 and scrapped in 2006. Back to the Tangaras, the reliability of which is significantly better than the 4D was, still operates in large numbers today. Sydney has been quite unique in its adoption of double-deck EMUs for suburban running, as most networks use single-deck trains or relegate double-deck trains to longer distance services and commuter networks. Like in France, the US or Canada, the latter two operate locomotive hauled and diesel-powered double-deckers only.
I think this is a good time to sit back and listen as this Tangara pulls into Mortdale Station and I think I'll jump on board and go for a ride. What's interesting to note is those intercarriage doors are still handle operated and all passenger announcements are still made directly by the driver. But since today's Tangara is pretty quiet, let's go for a wander through one of the carriages. See those little padded spots near the door? They're actually designed so you can lean up against them while standing up for extra comfort. Apparently when they do the new Tangara upgrade, they'll be going. Door closing. Please stand clear. Traditionally, I've always maintained that the upper deck is the place to be on a double deck train, thanks to those better views. Unfortunately, if your Tangara has cloudy windows on the top deck, that just isn't always the case. On the plus side, sitting on the top deck means you aren't staring at people's feet when you're pulling alongside the platform. But judging by the things that some followers inbox you with, it appears that some of you prefer the view from the bottom deck. Back to Tangaras, I nearly forgot to mention the early history where Tangaras were delivered in two different types, the T-sets and the G-sets. The T-set was designed for suburban running and the G-set was designed for outer suburban operations. The latter were converted back to T-sets after the Oscar was introduced and are often now difficult to distinguish as many of the unique features like toilets, drinking fountains and luggage racks have been removed. They can, however, be identified as having a number above T100 on the front. Anyway, I think we've covered off plenty on these Tangaras, which I believe are one of the most important trains in New South Wales and Australian rail history. Quite frankly, it still amazes me that these have been operating now for over 30 years, and despite the clouded windows, their design has aged quite well, remaining fresh, certainly compared to fluted steel trains like the K-sets, Queensland Rail EMU and Melbourne combing trains. So as we finish off this video, I'd like to say thank you for joining me and I will see you again soon.